Yo, Bachi 2007 back at you with another one. And we're going to look at a couple of things here. Um, and we're going to start with this article from today, uh, NBC, I think. Yes, NBC's program. Anyway, Taraji P. Henson says, It's not fair! The narrative has turned away from the color purple. It turned away from the color purple because she turned it away. In this uh, interview, if you recall, that you see there in the thumbnail, where she started crying and talking about, oh, I don't get paid enough. Oh, and it's not fair and it's not right. And I don't get paid like white people, even though I'm not white and my movies don't bring in white people money. It's unfair. I, I, I should get paid more for movies that do dramatically less revenue because, like, that makes sense, right? Let's read about it. Taraji P. Henson is ready for the narrative surrounding the color purple to change. Well, she should change it then because she's the one who caused it to change from what it was to begin with. Recently, her comments about her experience with pay disparity in Hollywood and the revelation that she nearly turned down the Broadway musical adaptation because she felt lowballed went viral. Now Henson is asking that the attention return to the film that was released last Christmas. This movie flopped. Yeah, I'm going to show you how it flopped. This movie is a major flop. It didn't flop a little bit. It flopped a lot. And even though it had that big opening day, that's all it had. It had one day, a, a decent second day, and then by the fourth day, it was already dead. And in no small part to Taraji Henson's efforts. So continuing with this article... I hope they focus back onto this film because right now, to me, it feels like what I said is now becoming louder than this beautiful movie. Yeah, you did what you said, ladies. You got it right there. It's your fault. Henson tells Today.com while promoting her always discreet brand partnership. And that's not fair to me. <laughs> You're the one who did it. What do you mean? It's not fair to you. You did it. You made that happen. How's it not fair to you? That's not fair to me or anybody in the film. I agree with the second part. And I mentioned this. Uh, maybe it was uh, on a blog post on a comment of a, of a YouTube video. That she, by doing this, by taking on this personal crusade and, give, and creating a negative spirit around this movie, she's deading her co-workers' pockets. Because your next movie role... And the amount of money you can ask for is based on how your previous movies have done. If your previous movies are flops, you can't go to a producer for a new movie and say, I deserve this much money because my movies do so well. No, they're saying you deserve very little money because the movie you just starred in bombed major and lost the last studio a ton of money. So you can't bring in an audience. Why would I pay you anything? To not bring in an audience. Just, just crazy. Continuing. Because the film deals with women who are oppressed. Or yeah. Who live in oppressed systems. Men and women. And all the characters in that film. Except for the white people. So that movie is about healing. The movie is about sisterhood. The movie is about uh, uh, Miss Sandry. As I pointed out in these videos here. That you can go take a look at. Uh, white supremacy being continued. Taken from white feminist which feminism is, is white females' supremacy and perpetuating the tropes of W.D. Griffith's Birth of a Nation about black men. That's what that movie's about. But they call that sisterhood. Denigration of black men is black female empowerment in the minds of uh, gender studies black women. And that's not fair to me or anybody. Okay, we read that part. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll skip this part. I don't care about that part. All right. While the film centers on Silly's journey of self-discovery, it also highlights the bond between women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the in a January 4th interview with W Magazine, Henson said one of the most striking things in The Color Purple was the angle of sisterhood. Okay, still going with that. All right, so that's that. Now, what then happened, of course, she shot up her mouth. Shot up her mouth, and then all the things about tension between her and Oprah Winfrey came out. Here's another article. Studio blames Oprah Winfrey and Taraji E. Benson for color purple flop. Now, so the studio is getting on their head. So that's why she's coming out with this art article 
on um, the 17th is when this came out. It says 19th out here. My time is off. It's, it's the, this is the night of the 18th. I'm recording this. This um, article came out a day before. It came out on the 18th on Wednesday, January 18th. And now we have this other article today on Thursday, January 18th, about the studio blaming Oprah and Taraji for the flop. Now, why Oprah? Let's find out. Let's read through. It's going to be a while, but we want to get some stuff out of this. Executives at Warner Brothers allegedly blame Oprah and the anti-DP Henson for the Color Purple music, movie musical, for the flop of the Color Purple movie musical. As Forbes reports, the film adaptation of the stage musical had an 18 million domestic opening, the largest on Christmas Day in over a decade before, I think it was the third largest all time, before falling to 7 million gross on day two and 3.8 million by the third day. I think by that fourth day, it was down to just over a million. That's how how far it, 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 it just tanked in just four days. Tanked in four days. The movie saw a 74.1% earnings drop after the first week of release. That is that is dramatic. That is as high as it ever gets. The Marvels, I think, had a 70, 71% drop. And you can see the uproar about that, how dramatic and crazy that was. This did even worse. And it didn't make as much money as the Marvels, even though it had that one huge day. If you take the whole weekend or you take the first three days of that movie versus the Marvels first three days where it made 46 million. This movie in the first three days, we just saw all the numbers, 18, 7 and 3.8. That's uh, 28, 29 million. And then it dropped bigger. It started smaller and dropped bigger than even the flop, that the all-time flop that is the Marvels. That's how bad it's doing for comparison. All right? The Color Purple movie musical reportedly had a $100 million plus marketing. It's $100 million production budget plus marketing is the way that should be stated. But the film has so far lost at least $75 million. $75 million. I'm going to show you why it's more than that. And the reason why it's more than that is because $100 million was the production budget. But then you have to do marketing and distribution. You have to market the movie. You have to pay for all those TV ads. You have to pay for all your actresses and actors to go on these junkets. She was on these junkets being paid for by the studio to do downgrade the film she's she's killing the spirit around the film based, talking about how much money she wasn't getting on junkets being paid for her to go to by the studio she's killing their film with her mouth and um so production but uh marketing budget marketing and distro tends to be anywhere from 50 to 100 percent of the production budget so that i would say at the minimum their marketing budget was fifty million, so they spent a minimum of one hundred and fifty million on this film, and it made back very little. We're going to see how little it made back, and I'm going to do the whole math for you. But it's going to be some of it in this article. One insider told Media Takeout executives blamed Taraji P. Henson for derailing the promotional efforts of the film and using it as a selfish opportunity to change her personal narrative as an aging, underpaid actress, and that's what. It's really all about, um, as not people lessons, but um, the Crimson Cure said, this is all about her personally aging out of the market and not being able to get the role she used to anymore and her market value going down. She's hit the wall. She hit the wall as a woman many years ago. She's now hitting the wall as a Hollywood actress. And this was all about her, her selfishness and her desire to get more money. During her promotional tour, Taraji claims she and her co-stars were mistreated on set. Um, it's said that the cast got a lot of stuff on that set because she fought for it, including transportation to the set and sufficient trailers. Um, her co-star Daniel, Dan, uh, Daniel Books said that Taraji spoke up for us behind the scenes as the cast also didn't have adequate food until Henson called Oprah and lodged a complaint. Studio executives allegedly reprimanded Oprah for not controlling Henson's mouth. See, people think that this is Oprah's movie. I had a white supremacist on Twitter try to say, oh, how could this movie be about white supremacy? It's an Oprah Winfrey movie. No, it is not. Uh, the, ex the executive producer of the movie is um, 
what is his name? Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg was the director of the first movie. It's his production. He created the movie in the first place. The and then the the uh, license for the movie or the not the yeah the the rights of the movie belong to the studio. I think you said Warner Brothers, right at the top. Yeah, yeah. Um, so studio execs. So it's it's Steven Spielberg and Warner Brothers. Uh, who are over this movie, who own the product. Oprah Winfrey is just a black front for the movie. She's just the face of the film and of the production. She is a producer, one of the executive producers, but she's the face of it. The white folks own it and run it, and they out here reprimanding the gatekeeper. They are reprimanding her. They calling her in the office. Like, why aren't you controlling your blacks? You need to go control your girl. Control your blacks, Oprah. You ain't doing your job. We put you in charge of this for you to control the blacks. And you ain't even doing that right. You're not even being a good handmaiden for the masses. That's a problem. The insider told me to take out Oprah should have taken Taraji to the side when she noticed she was taking the promotional efforts in a negative space. Yeah, I was surprised that they didn't jump on her and get on her right away. And apparently they didn't, but they did eventually. Right. And that's why she's now coming out with this new article. Um, I think I missed the part about let me see, control F about how much money they were earning. That should have been uh okay, let's see. Here it goes. Um, I skipped this part. The studio will only get about twenty four million with the other half. The other half will go to the theater that showed the film. So this is what you have to understand. People look at a box office and say they made this much at the box office. So if a movie costs fifty million and they made fifty six million at the box office, people say, okay, that movie made its money back. Well, that's a lie. This, the studio only gets about half the money. You think the theaters are showing movies for free? They are not. The theaters keep about half. The studio gets half. So if a movie costs fifty million and they get fifty six million back. That they get fifty six million box office. That means the studio only got twenty three million back. That means that movie just on the production budget alone uh, lost twenty seven million dollars. Okay, so we're going to see what this movie's making. Let's take a look. This is the second weekend of the Color Purple, January fifth weekend, fifth through the seventh. For that weekend, the fifth through the seventh, Color Purple was in second place. This is its second weekend out. It's already in seventh place. It only made $4.6 million its second weekend. That's only a little bit more than it made in its uh, third day. That's less. That's 40% less than it made its second day in, in its whole weekend. The second weekend of release. Let me show you what movies do in second weekends of release. This is Creed. Creed costs less than... Uh, uh, the color purple. Just production budget alone, Creed was only seventy-five million to the color purple's fifty million. In Creed's second weekend, it's in second place with twenty-seven million dollars, compared to a paltry four point six. Let's go over the Hunger Games that came out just recently in November. The Ballad of the Songbirds and Snakes. This is its second week, November 24th. That came out November 17th. In its second weekend, it's still number one. It has $29 million take compared to Color Purple's second weekend being $4 million. After that second weekend, the Color Purple most days is only making like half a million dollars. But a movie's making less than a million dollars, especially in the first four or five uh, weeks of its run, that movie is dead. It's already over. It was dead by the second week. By the end of the second week, and this movie was already dead. Its box office was already over. And let's look at its total take. It started off with 18 million in one day. Three weeks later, it's only up to 58 million. It only made, it made uh, like I said, the first three days, it made 28, 29 million. It's only made another 29 million the next. Uh, how many days has it been? I can't even do that. It came out on the 25th. It's been exactly three weeks. So three days it made $29 million, and the rest of those three weeks it made only $29 million more. This movie is already dead. It's already over with. 
That's why the studio is only getting $24 million because the movie theaters keep half. They, they said the movie lost $75 million so far. Again, they didn't count the marketing budget. They only t- talked about the $100 million production budget. If you add just a minimum of $50 million for marketing budget, that means this movie is losing $126 million. $126 million it's losing. They did do an international release in a couple of markets, but it's not making anything internationally. It's not. Let's see, what's the worldwide number on this? Let's see what the international box office. Here it goes. Look at zero. <laughs> they just started releasing it internationally in the last few days. I guess the numbers haven't been reported yet uh, by the studio. And it doesn't matter. They're not going to make more than a few million overseas. This movie lost well over a hundred million dollars. Just money gone. The studio Warner Brothers just burnt money. But it's unfair to Taraji, which she's the one who's partially to blame. She didn't totally tank it by herself. Um, this made it make less than it would have made. It probably would have made maybe ten or twenty million dollars more. It was going to be a tank job anyway, because nobody wanted this. It, did, it should not have cost $100 million to make this movie. The original was made for $15 million. If you put that in today's numbers for inflation, the, today's equivalent of the original $15 million is $42 million. I looked this up a couple weeks ago. $42 million is what this movie should have been made for at most. And they blew $100 million on a movie that doesn't have special effects, that doesn't have... Anything, any major battle scenes that have to be orchestrated or anything that should be dramatically expensive. They blew money. They did this movie wrong. And then Taraji didn't help by running her mouth for her own selfish reasons. But, of course, somebody's always doing them wrong. She's the one who did it, but it's unfair to her. Okay, lady. Okay. 